it's uh it's about 35 degrees 150 miles south of san antonio it's warming up which is awesome because last night 14 degrees tonight 16 degrees our water is frozen in the trailer which is the first time that that's happened to us in four and a half years so i thought this would be a great time to reveal our new truck let's go Welcome to our new truck. This is a all new 2021 Ford F-350 Tremor Edition with a 7.3 liter gas engine. And before some of you diesel dudes get on here and chastise me, the 7.3 has the oomph. It's basically the diesel engine from 12 years ago. These things are awesome and I'm so happy with it. I think it's gonna really prove to be a winner for me. It's not for everybody, it's for the trailer size that we're looking to pull. I think anybody pulling 15,000 pounds or under is gonna be happy with something like this. You don't pay the premium that you do for a diesel. You don't deal with all the emission stuff that they're throwing on the modern diesels, but you still get the power and, uh, and the ability to tow your vehicle up steep grades. It's paired with the new 10 speed transmission and it's the Tremor Edition, which I think is so awesome. I wasn't planning on getting a Tremor Edition. I was really like hinting at my wife that I wanted one. But when it came down to it, the stuff they add with the Tremor Edition, the 35 inch Wrangler off-road tires, the rear locking differential, the running boards, which would have cost me a thousand bucks anyway to put on, trail control mode, all that sort of stuff, I think is gonna be really useful for us because we do get off the road quite often even when we're camping in a campground we're often going on some of those four by four roads in national parks and national forests and we're often boondocking in an area where you can get your trailer in if you go slowly but the real pain is going in and out and in and out and in and out in your truck that's where this is going to really shine for us and i'm super excited for it so we previously towed our 9,000 pound trailer with a Ram Gasser, a 5.7 Hemi from 2014. It had 185,000 miles on it, which was great for us. It was still running well. These trucks really do uh, continue to run well, even at high mileages. But it just, uh, our, our trailer was probably the limit of it. And we are looking to upgrade later this year to a little bit heavier trailer. Not anything ridiculous but heavier nonetheless and a one ton truck a 350 it's going to make a big difference for us in payload capacity and and frankly the power to haul something this thing has a heck of a lot more power has a heck of a lot more torque and it's rated to tow a lot more this particular configuration of this truck this is the short bed it's rated to tow 20,200 pounds as a fifth wheel or gooseneck and 15,000 pounds conventional towing. It's got a payload of 4,020 pounds, all of which is gonna be plenty for us. We're gonna be well, well, well under, I mean 40% under those numbers. So I think we're gonna to be totally fine. And if our first tow, which we did the other day, is any indication, I think uh, I'm gonna be really happy with this truck. I will say, I did try this first tow, I did try doing it without the weight distribution hitch. We've always towed with a Equalizer E2 weight distribution hitch because with a three quarter ton truck and a decent amount of weight in the bed and on the uh, hitch, it's nice to have that weight shift to the front axle. In addition, you get a heck of a lot of sway control with that. So I tried to do it without that and uh, just coupled up to a hitch ball. That was a failure. Uh, 
we did get quite a bit of sway. There is electronic sway control built into this truck, but basically what it does is it tells you, hey, you're gonna you're about to sway and kicks off the cruise control and slows you down. Which is great. Um but uh I think we're gonna go back to using the weight distribution hitch uh just for that added sway control. I it's it's so worth it. Um and it's not uh it's not worth saving the extra five minutes it takes to hook it up when you're heading out to leave. So I also know I've already gotten a lot of flack from people who think uh, you should never buy a new truck. And you know, I'm a bit in that camp as well normally about cars. I normally can't afford to buy a new car in general. And uh, depreciation is the biggest expense that you'll run into in vehicle ownership. That said, truck prices are kinda high right now. Uh, inventories are low, a lot like RVs. Inventories on dealership lots are very low. The dealership I bought this from, Jordan Ford in San Antonio, which by the way, were absolutely excellent to me. Um, had a great experience. They have two full lots of trucks. They think they pretty much only sell trucks. Um, well, they sell other stuff, but it's mostly trucks. We're in Texas, right? One lot was completely empty. And part of that is because there, uh, there's still backlogs from building up inventory due to COVID shutdowns. And now there's this new computer chip problem uh, that Ford has with a shortage of computer chips that's stopping production. And actually, I heard this cold spell that we're going through right now is stopping production in the Kansas City plant for at least a week. So there's a... There, there's a bit of limited availability in trucks. Truck values were pretty high in the first place. So when you look at buying a used truck, like for us, A, if we were gonna get an, a gas engine, we had to get this engine. I don't think we would have been happy towing the range that we're gonna be towing with, you know, the 13 to 14,000 pound range with a gas truck uh, that was not the 7.3 liter. We probably would have went with a Ram. All of the heavy duty Rams now come with the larger Hemi engine, which uh, I would have appreciated that additional power, but it really didn't have the towing capacity to deal with the loads that we want to deal with. So if we weren't able to get this engine, which has only been around for a year and a half, we would have had to gone diesel, which would have been fine. I would have been totally fine going diesel, but going diesel for us in our price range, I mean, you're talking about a, an additional $10,000. Now this engine's a premium as well of about $1,900, but the diesel is an upgrade of about $10,000. So $8,000 more than this engine. And for us, that was going to put us in used territory and used is fine as well, but used values right now you know if we were going to get a two to three year old truck a four year old truck we'd be paying close to what you'd be paying new they're expensive and then you have to deal with the fact that the warranty is ending on them and if you want to add extended warranty that's another cost and once you add that cost on well then you're looking at the price of a new truck almost so we saved money, especially not going diesel, by far in the end in buying this truck. So this is an XLT, which is one step up from the work truck, which I think is enough trim for us. Um, we don't need a lot of the high-end stuff. I mean, it's all nice and, and no shame to anybody that's got the leather interior and uh, adaptive cruise control, which I would really love. and. Uh, and, and all that fun stuff, LED headlights. We don't have any of that, but we do have the basic features that I was looking for. And those are a big back seat, which is a big, big upgrade from the Ram, by the way. If you, don't, if you have a Ram and it's not the mega cab, the Ram cab is so much smaller. I have a whole foot. If I sit in the back, I have a whole foot of space in front of my knees. This is the first truck I've ever sat in, the first vehicle I've ever sat in, where I actually had to pull the seat forward. I'm six foot two. I had to pull the seat forward to get up to the gas pedals. That is awesome to me. 
and even the Ram Mega Cab, which is looks massive, um, is actually not that big. The leg room is still the same as you get in the Fords or the Chevys because a lot of that additional space is behind the back seat and the Mega Cab. So I'm really happy to have all this leg room, especially for my kids or growing boys. I think we'll have this truck for a long time. My oldest is 13. And you know, in six years, my youngest will be 13. So that's that's a big deal to me to have plenty of rank, leg room for them, for them to be comfortable as us being full timers and driving a lot in this truck. We spend a lot of time in our trucks. It has the safety features that I wanted. It has automatic emergency braking, which I think is going to save thousands and thousands of lives every year once it becomes more and more standard. It has a better audio system, which I know Ram has made huge progress on the infotainment system, but uh, the one we had really stunk and really did not like talking to our Bluetooth, um, anything like that. So I'm really happy with the Sync 3 system here on the Ford and super happy to have Apple CarPlay so we can just hook up our iPhone and use any of the driving iPhone apps that we like to use straight through it. And ju I just have to press a button on the steering wheel to talk to Siri, which is really cool. This doesn't have that fancy backup towing system that Ford puts out now, which is also really cool. Um, but I don't know that I really need that. I mean, how many times am I actually backing up the trailer? Not that many. And I'm kind of thrilled to just have a backup camera because I didn't have a backup camera on the old truck. I do wish I had the full 360 degree camera system. I did not get that. Um, that would be cool for situations where you're driving through really tight spaces on like forest service roads and stuff. So you can really look around you and see what's around you, but that's okay. One thing that I thought was a big gimmick that I didn't think was gonna be a big deal to me at all was the way the, the way these windows are cut down on the forts. I can see so much, I can look down and I can see so much out this window. It's fantastic. As a matter of fact, my field of view all the way around in this truck is way better than it was in the Ram. The Ram's windshield, I feel, is steeper and, uh, and the, the hood sits up higher. So even though this truck is taller, it's got a two inch lift on the front and I think an inch and a half on the rear. Uh, and that's part of the tremor package as well. I feel like I can see what's in front of the truck so much better. I can see the world around me a whole lot better. So I'm really, really happy about that. I also really love the power folding and extending mirrors in this truck. That's something that I, I didn't think would be a big deal either, but the Rams have these crazy vertical mirrors. You flip them up vertical for towing, which is a real pain because you have to get your eyes used to the arrangement of the two mirrors every time. And that was real annoying for me. And I think it's annoying to a lot of Ram users. So a lot of, a lot of us would just leave them in the vertical position. And if you are a listener to the podcast, you know that we had two separate trucks hit each of our mirrors within the same week and knock off the turn signal on one and then the turn signal and broke the mirror on the other one. And uh, that's really annoying to me. In addition, on my way to the bank, I, I had to go to a, go by a bank to withdraw a check to put the down payment down on this. And in the Ram, I had to get out because my bank doesn't allow you to do walk-in right now without an appointment. So I had to go through the drive-thru, which is hard to do in a big truck anyway. But the mirrors were too wide. I had to get out and go fold that mirror, which was kind of a sign to me that, wow, this is really annoying. And this truck, I can move them in and out with just the press of a button. The, the mirrors go out and in, and then I can fold them in and out with the press of the button. And when I get out and lock the truck, the mirrors fold in on themselves, which makes me feel like they're a little bit better protected, which is great because they're expensive if you have to go fix one. So that's our new truck. I'm gonna go set it up with the old weight distribution hitch and hopefully we'll get it off road here soon. But first, we're gonna tow our trailer out of this cold weather. We're gonna start making our way east into Louisiana, where hopefully we'll find some, I don't know, maybe some cool swampy back road off-roading to do. 
Heck, I-10 will probably be bad enough a test, so see you on the next one. Oh, 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 oh